So guys, what I wanted to do is a review on this Ox um, coffee maker. It's based on the uh, Keurig uh, design, so it takes the uh, K-cups. It also does hot water as well. Um, my concern when I bought this was that um, the wattage uh, that this thing requires is quite high. It's uh, it's you know like your typical hair dryer or something like that. It's it's upwards of about 1,500 watts. My goal was to have it run on this uh, Goal Zero, this Yeti. Um, unfortunately, this thing uh, maxes out. I think it's around 1,300. So what I want to do is I want to see if I can push the envelope on this thing. Um, it's been on the charger um, all night. It is, the battery is full. Uh, if you can see, um, zoom in here, see if you can read the LCD without uh, any glare. Um, it is full. It's, it's on charger right now. You can see that it's getting um, some wattage input, and it's actually outputting uh, to this uh, Dometic uh, uh, fridge freezer right now. This thing max out at about 30 watts. So this thing I can go for uh, roughly roughly a week before I've got to uh, actually put this thing on a charger. It's not insulated very well. Uh, once the temperatures go up here in the summer, it's going to be you know more like two three days that this thing will be uh, eat up uh, eat up this battery. Typically, this thing is running. Um, I have a, a, down in the corner here, I have a, uh, um, an inverter built into the car. Uh, while the car's sitting, it'll do upwards of 400 watts, but while it's driving, it maxes out at 100. Luckily, the input for the Goal Zero is, uh, maxes out at 70 watt. It typically um, is charging at about 60. Um, so let's see if this, uh, this Ox, this thing is supposed to be the most durable uh, coffee maker. They actually um, have videos of cars standing on top of this thing. So I just want coffee without the mess and not having to deal with a, uh, a press and just be able to, you know, toss the, the K cup when I'm done. Um, so it has a retractable, retractable cord here. And to make the test fair, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the freezer, just make sure there's no other variables in here. I'm going to turn that off. Um, plug in here, turn on the 110. We're going to open up the tray here. We're going to turn this on. It says heating. Um, I have brew or I have water and then I pick the cup size. Um, it's not going to give me the option to do anything until it's up to temperature. So if we look at the wattage right now, it says it's using 11, 1187, it's going to toggle around a little bit. Um, my concern is um, this Goal Zero um, has a safety or a fuse set at 1500. So if we hit that 1500 or we, we uh, actually drain the battery uh, in order to do this, this isn't going to work. This solution isn't going to work and we're going to need a more powerful inverter than what's in the car and that's the one that maxes out at 400. So you would you'd probably need an inverter upwards of to be safe with some overhead 17, 1800. 2000 would probably be a, a good choice um, although once you hit 2000 the price you're looking at 180 to over $200 for, for that kind of inverter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put, um, I'm going to fill up this mug and we're going to put, uh, this one we're going to, we're going to put coffee in. So I'm going to set it right there. Uh, luckily I've got some K cups in the drawer here. Uh, some Kirkland brand. And we're going to lift the top here. Drop the K-cup in. We're going to set it. It's already on brew, so we're going to just do the 8-ounce cup here. Notice um, the um, it's not putting out any wattage right now, although it is charging because I have it plugged into. I actually have a cord plugged into, a, in, into the house. I actually probably should have unplug that for a fair test, but let's see how this thing does. 
this is an eight ounce cup, so um, it's probably gonna fill this maybe two thirds of this cup, two thirds. There's three, three, I think it's three settings. It's eight, 10, and 12. Um, oh, there it's heating up again. Notice it's at 1200 watts, so it's preparing the, the next cup. Um, that next cup, what I think I'll do to, to, to make this fair, and then notice it went down. So it actually does, in about 30 seconds, it gets it up the temperature, which is really, really pretty good. And it hit up, it went up again. Um, it's pretty quick to temperature, it's just, it uses a lot of watts. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some water in, in this um, um, spill proof uh, vacuum sealed mug here. As soon as this one's this one's done, still going here, and it's just about done there. Okay, so I've got the eight ounces of hot coffee, and uh, uh, awesome, no no mess. Um, Got the cake up here, can pull the cake up out. I'm gonna leave it in there right now because I don't wanna deal with it. Um, and then I just made a little bit of a more mess. So what I'm gonna do is this tumbler um, doesn't quite fit in there. Um, so you want two choices. This little plastic gate here pops, pops out of the whole mechanism, or if you pull on here, this'll come straight out. I can put the mug right there. Um, the other thing to know is that this um, this will automatically turn itself off after 30 minutes. So if I accidentally left left it uh, plugged in, um, I don't necessarily have to. You know, it's going to heat up that one cup of coffee, um, the the small reservoir that's in there, and then it's going to heat up. You know, if I go to a different size, but it shouldn't shouldn't drain the the battery. It should uh, maintain that that small little reservoir. Uh, so that, now I'm going to switch over to, um, here I'm going to switch over to water and I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to pick the uh, largest cup size. That should be, I believe, 12. Uh, we're automatically kicking in here, we're at about 1200. Um, it hasn't shut off. I, I, I should um, advise you guys that I did try this the other day. Um, I, had, I hadn't driven this vehicle in a couple days and the goal zero was already at 60% before I started the test. So it wasn't, uh, it, it didn't finish my first cup of coffee. So um, I, I think long, if, if you're gonna do a couple cups, um, an inver a bigger inverter would certainly, certainly be the way to go. Um, this device here takes 18 hours to charge via AC, and that's the way I'm charging it, through, through an inverter in the car. Um, you can do DC to DC, but for whatever reason, this thing takes longer to do DC. I don't know if it's a flaw in their design or it's just the way it is. So 18 hours to go from zero to 100. So if I only brought this thing, to, if this was at 80% when I was done, it would only take a few hours um, to do that, and I could do that while I was driving. Um, so that's just just something to keep in mind. Um, if I just wanted, you know, a cup here and there, this this would be okay. If I was going to do four cups for you know four different people, that could pose as a problem. As you can tell, it had no problem filling up this tumbler to the requested amount. Um, to give you an idea of where this goal zero is brought down to right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, turn off the uh, turn off the ox. We're just going to hit the off button, and I'm going to unplug the input, and this should give me an idea of where the uh, where the battery is at. Um, it's at 80 percent, so I really I really didn't do. A whole lot of damage to the battery that should charge up in in just a few hours back up to a hundred percent these are um, marine um, deep cell 
um, or deep cycle batteries in here. You, you can build devices like this um, for a lot cheaper than what I paid for this. Um, but it's got a you know pure sign inverter. I just wish the inverter in here was a little bit bigger. But as you can tell, it seemed to have done what it was supposed to. Um, so if you want coffee on the road, or for you know small little events where you don't have a ton of you know ton of people to um, to have to fill up with coffee, this is a I'm pretty happy with this. Um, the reservoir um, is it's completely waterproof. Um, it has it has a filter built in. In here, you change every three months. There's actually a if you can see that there's actually a a, a calendar on here. You can set it. I got to change this one in July. And um, I would suggest putting pur purified water in here versus something out of the tap just because um, you don't want to have to deal with hard water getting in the lines in there. I, 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 don't, know what, I don't know what the long term um, uh, of the device is going to be, but better to be safe and stick with, uh, stick with something that's not going to have a... Uh, uh, Put it put any additional residue in the lines and that's basically it i'm very happy so far with the you know the fit that the cord tucks in really nicely i'm sure if i mentioned this thing has tie down straps as well so depending on your vehicle or where you want to put this you could set it up here and you could take you could get some small little bungees and tie that, you know, around here, and the uh, the thing would be uh, um, um, tied down pretty good. Especially if you got little kids or something like that, and you don't need this thing, you know, tipping over and spilling hot water, hot coffee, on uh, on anybody. Keep it keep it a little bit safer. Um, I have plugged it back in. Um, it's charging the the goal zero right now. I've plugged the freezer back in. Freezer is set at uh, right now. 35 not sure if you guys can see that um, if you guys are don't have an inverter or really want to test out um, the ox um, on different types of devices you could use something like a uh, kilowatt meter and you could plug this in um, plug it into your your AC and your wall and measure the actual wattage that you're getting from the house. What I did notice when I use this, plug it into the house, and this could be the difference between the, the meter on here and then the meter on here, is this one went, I think the highest was around 1200. The inside plugged in directly to a, a wall receptacle and then into this, this thing got as high as 1350. I was encouraged when I seen that because I know the the max on this it has a peak at 1500. I don't know how many seconds it'll do at 1500, but it never went to 1500. Uh, it was right around that 1200, which um, is good. Um, if that's not going to work, the other option, if you are you know um, someone who does overlanding, obviously that's one of the reasons I got this um, and. Um, but if, if, if you already have existing equipment, like a, uh, uh, a pure sine, uh, sine wave generator, um, this 2,000 watt device will work just fine. Um, this one I have not tested. This is 1,000 watt. My, uh, my assumption is it's not going to cut it. It's going to end up um, cutting out. On, um, and when it cuts out, in order to reset it, you actually have to restart the engine um, on this little device. Maybe in a later video, I will um, go in to see if this one works. It'd be great if it did. Um, but uh, according to uh, according to Ox, they rated this thing at 1,500 watts, so it's it's just it's under that. So there's uh, there's some headroom in the. Um, in the inverter that uh, that you choose to use. Um, so hope uh, hope you guys find this video 
um, helpful. And uh, being today that is Easter Sunday, um, celebration um, not of rabbits or bunnies, but the resurrection uh, of our Christ uh, Jesus, the Christ, the one and only. So have a blessed day and hope to see you guys again. God bless.